Greetings, and welcome to the Noob's Guide to Akasha, your one-stop shop for learning everything about Akashic magic. Uh, my name is Crystal, and I will be guiding you through the mysteries of this interesting Pathfinder subsystem. Now, this does assume that you already know a bit about Pathfinder and how magic in Pathfinder works. Uh, so if you don't, I would recommend looking into that. I don't currently have any videos up for that, although I may in the future. Uh, Pathfinder magic is very similar to uh, 3.5 D&D magic, so, you know, you could look into that, uh, see if anyone's made those. But we're here to talk about Akasha. Now, first we need to figure out exactly what Akasha is. Um, we're not going to be going too deep into lore stuff, uh, mostly just the mechanics here. But Akasha is a subsystem for Pathfinder. Uh, first came out in the Akashic Mysteries book, uh, developed by Dreamscard Press, and it has evolved quite a bit since then, uh, with a lot of other publishers and developers making things for the Akashic Magic system. So, uh, the first thing we should look at is figuring out how to start as an Akashic character. Uh, while there are some races that have innate Akashic abilities, uh, the first place you're generally going to start is with a class. So we're going to use right here the Vizier as our example. Uh, the Vizier is essentially the Wizard of Akasha. It's got the most magical abilities, um, it's got a high pool of essence, and a lot of veil shaped as well as some interesting magical class features uh, that deal with its veil weaving. And those are some terms you're going to have to get used to here, uh, because like a lot of subsystems, uh, Akasha has special names for its things. So its magical effects, instead of being called spells, are called veils. Now veils aren't one-to-one -one exactly spells, in fact they are quite different. Uh, but that's the kind of general mindset you want to get into. Uh, a class that uses veils, it's called a veil weaver, much like a class that uses spells, it's called a spellcaster. Uh, and there is also a resource here called Essence, uh, which is a pool that you move around throughout various Essence receptacles, um, such as veils, but also class features, uh, certain feats and items, things like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, just a level one Vizier here. Uh, we're going to be talking more about the veils and the Essence than the actual class features because the class features are themselves pretty self-explanatory, like Eldritch Insight and Mystic Attunement. Uh, Eldritch Insight just allows you to use uh, certain magical items as though you were a wizard or something. Uh, so you can use scrolls and wands and things like that, while the Mystic Attunement is more akin to, say, a bloodline of a sorcerer, where you pick one path of Mystical Attunement, and you go down that getting the class features and abilities that it grants you as you level up. <clears throat> but a first level Vizier is going to get two veils. Now when you are uh, utilizing veils, it works very much like a cleric's casting uh, where you have access to the entire list of veils, uh, but you can only shape a certain number of them per day. Um, and the veil, uh, the Vizier here is an intelligence-based class, so they use int uh, to use their abilities. Uh, they also have access to a unique slot, which I will be getting into shortly. But as you can see here, we'll take a look at the Vizier Veil list. Uh, there are quite a few veils. Now, uh, as you can see here, they are uh, grouped into different slots, which are the basis of Akashic magic. Those are called chakras, generally. Oh, that's the Fisher King. Uh, the Fisher King uses the Vizier list and... Uh, but they have their own uh, couple of veils here that's just for them. So, getting into veils more deeply here, yeah, you can see here that veils have slots. There are 15 slots in total at the time of this video's production. Uh, there are 10 general slots, which every Akashic character has access to, uh, and there are five esoteric chakras, uh, which is what we call the ones that are class-specific. So the 10 General slots are the belt, uh, blood, body, or no, not blood, sorry, that's a David slot. 
belt body, chest, feet, hands, head, headband, neck, shoulders, and wrist, uh, which as you can see here, correspond rather well to the magical item slots. Now, since Akasha was based off of a 3.5 system called the Magic of Incarnum, uh, it shares a lot of similarities with that system. However, in Incarnum, your soul melds, which is what they called veils back then, uh, actually took up your magic item slots. So you couldn't use, you know, a ring of protection as well as a ring slot veil. You couldn't use a belt of physical strength as well as a belt slot veil. Uh, however, in Akasha, that restriction is not here. So ignore that I said it. <laughs> but as you can see here, they have the head, headband, shoulders, neck, chest, body, uh, belt, wrist, hands, feet. Those are the general veils. Again, there are no eye slot veils, nor are there armor. And there are ring slot veils, but those are the esoteric chakras. Esoteric chakras are blood, which is the Davic veil slot. Uh, Davics get access to the blood slot and can infuse their blood with mystical abilities. Uh, they also have the ability to put other veils into their blood slot at the cost of their own life. A sort of a, a deadly technique. There's also the interface slot, which is the slot for helmsmen, uh, which is a more futuristic class. Uh, they get a mech and they uh, use their interface slot to interact with the mech uh, as well as their allies uh, if they are riding aboard their mech or vessel. Uh, there's the ring slot, which we mentioned is the vizier veil. Uh, rings, the uh, vizier gets two of those uh, and can take a third with a feat, so they get up to three rings. Take that, dad. Uh, there is the storm slot. Uh, which is the slot for Storm Bounds, uh, which is a very interesting Veil slot uh, because Storms don't work quite like other Veils, uh, and they are very deadly to the user unless you have some kind of ability to protect against them. And finally, we have the Voice slot, uh, which is the slot for the Fisher King, which I mentioned earlier. There are also Minor Veils, which work a bit like cantrips, and then there are Veil sets, uh, which kind of group veils into certain thematic groupings um, and certain feats and other abilities give you bonuses if you are using uh, a large number of veils from a certain set. So let's go ahead and take a look at a veil right now. Uh, we have here the Curious of Confidence, which is one of the first veils released uh, in the Akashic Mysteries book. It's just a very simple veil here. Uh, so let's start from the top. You can see that veils have descriptors, much like spells do. Curious of Confidence is mind affecting. So it interacts with creatures who are resistant or immune to mind affecting in much the same way that a spell would. Uh, some veils have their own unique descriptors that do not appear on spells, uh, such as the title descriptor, but we can get into that a bit later. Uh, next is the class, which works similarly to this, uh, this line that you would see in Magic, uh, where it would list, you know, this is a Wizard 3 spell, this is a Cleric 2 spell, saying that it, a Wizard gets this at, uh, when they access 3rd level spells, a Cleric gets it when they access 2nd. Uh, but since every Veil is available, uh, available, uh, to a Veil Weaving class, it just lists the class. Now, the Curious of Confidence is available for the Davic, the Helmsman, the Lunar, and the Vizier. Other classes can access veils that are not on their list uh, through a feat uh, called Shape Veil, but it's much easier for you to access it if it's already on your list, obviously. Uh, next is the slot, and this is where Akasha starts diverging from magic. You can see that the Cures of Confidence is a chest slot veil. Now, uh, at early levels, the slot of a veil doesn't really matter, uh, except for the fact that you cannot shape the same veil twice, nor can you shape the same veil in a slot as another veil. So if you have the Curious of Confidence shaped, you couldn't shape another chest slot veil, uh, like the, oh, I can't even think of one now, the Raiment of Swirling Fog, I believe is a, a chest slot veil as well. Uh, unless that veil has a second or third slot. 
Now, some veils have more than one slot. The Curious of Confidence just has one. Uh, but a lot of weapon type veils are hands and wrist. And we'll get into what that means later. But just know that you can shape it in either one of the slots, but you cannot shape it in both. That is a saving throw, much like a spell, will negates. So the same kind of terminology that you would see there. And you can see here from the text that the Curious of Confidence makes people like you better uh, through the diplomacy system. It increases the attitude unless they uh, succeed against the will save of the veil. <clears throat> uh, this here is just a bit of fluff text, which every veil has. I quite like it compared to spells, which generally say the spell is a fireball. It is a ball of fire that balls for fires. Not fun. Uh, these are nice and very flavorful. And next you have the descriptor, which as I said, just tells you the general rules of the veil and what it does. Uh, a lot of veils are going to be either constant abilities or at will abilities, although some of the stronger ones are going to have limited uses of their abilities, uh, their basic ones. Um, a lot of veils that you'll see are equivalent to about first, maybe second level spells, um, and they are generally at will, which is why you have far less of them than a caster would have spells of equivalent power. Uh, next section is the essence section. Now this ties back into the pool of essence uh, that we discussed earlier where you can invest essence into the veil in order to gain bonuses uh, to what it does so you can see here that for each point of essence invested in this ability you gain a plus one insight bonus to diplomacy checks against any creature that has been affected by this veil's primary ability within the past 24 hours so it gives you a little bonus to your diplomacy there and as you can see from the table here the Vizier has quite a bit of essence to play around with, although not quite as much at early levels. So they only have one point of essence to go into their two veils, which means somebody's going to be losing out unless you're taking a feat that gives you extra essence, like the feat Extra Essence. Fun. Uh, but as they level up, you can see that number increases as the number of veils slows down, uh, ending with a total of 30 essence at 20th level, but only 11 veils to share it amongst. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Crystal, why can't I just shove all that 30 essence into one veil? Well, that is because there is what is called an essence capacity. Now, you can only put so much essence into any individual receptacle, such as a veil. Uh, at first level through to fifth level, the capacity is just one. And then at 6th level and every 6 levels afterwards, it increases by 1. So if you are not a Veil Weaver, you don't have any levels in a class like Vizier or Radiant or anything, that's only going to go up to 4. So you could only put 4 Essence into a Veil. Now most Veil Weaving classes have improved Essence capacities where they get it. You can see here that the Vizier gets one at 3rd level, one at 11th level and one at 19th level, uh, which is a bit odd. Uh, the Vizier, of course, was one of the earliest classes for Akashic Magic. So a lot of its abilities are different than things that were released later. Most classes nowadays, uh, if they have three essence increases, are going to have it at 3rd, at 9th, and at 15th. So you get it basically every three levels instead of every six levels <clears throat> uh, but the vizier as i said is a little weird all right so we don't need to be there anyway and finally we have the chakra bind section uh, so if a veil has more than one slot it is going to have more than one bind now you can see here this is the chakra bind for chest because it's a chest slot veil uh, this right here is just Bind reminder text. So it tells you that uh, the Davic gets the chest bind at 19th level, while the Vizier gets it at 18th level. So a chest bind is a very high level ability, and it's equivalent to about a 7th, maybe 8th level spell, generally speaking. Now you might notice that Helmsman and Lunar also get this veil, but they do not have access 
is fine. That's because Helmsman and Lunar don't get the chest slot. So, not every class that has a veil on its list is going to have the chest bind, or the bind in general, in order to bind it to their body and gain access to these higher level abilities. As you can see here, uh, chakra binds are unlocked for the vizier every two levels, so they get hands, feet, head, wrist, shoulders, headband, neck, belt, chest, and finally body, which is generally the ultimate uh, bind that you get for any given class, is the body bind. Uh, those are very powerful abilities, although not quite as powerful as you would see in most 9th level spells like, say, Wish or Time Stop. Uh, we can take a look at some body slot veils here. Let's scroll down a little bit. There we go. So you can get things like uh, air walking uh, that you can share with your allies. You can gain acid immunity. Uh, you can get an ice tomb sort of ability. Count as levels, uh, a couple sizes higher. Gain immunities to things. Stuff like that. You know, true seeing. Uh, this is a good one. Banishment, dimensional anchor. I believe that is limited per day though, if I check here. Mm, yeah. Three times per day, yeah. So you can see that even though some of these are very, very powerful in what they can do, they are also very limited in what they can do. Now I mentioned Essence a little earlier and Investment, and I want to get into that just real quick here. So as a general rule, you can invest your Essence into any of your receptacles, and you can use a swift action to invest or to reinvest Essence. Anytime you use that swift action, you can move around every single point of your essence wherever you like, uh, take it all out of your veils, put it all back in, uh, move it between your feet and your items and your veils and everything like that. It's a really interesting kind of system, uh, sort of like uh, in like Star Trek or the game uh, FTL, Faster Than Light, where you can divert you know, power from your weapons to your shields, things like that. You can move the essence around on the fly. It's a very modular system. Uh, sometimes essence is required to be bound into a receptacle, and although this shares the same name with binding, uh, like veils, it's not quite the same. When essence is bound, it is locked into place and you cannot remove it until the next day when you reshape your veils. Uh, there are some exceptions to this, things that can happen to bound essence, but we don't need to get into that with just this general overview here. <clears throat> uh, next, we'll just talk about some general terms, uh, such as Veil Weaving Level. Uh, this is very similar to the Caster Level that you would see on a lot of magical classes. However, the Veil Weaving Level is the sum total of your level in all Veil Weaving classes. So, if you had two levels of Vizier and two levels of Radiant, which is the Akash equivalent to a Cleric or something like that, it's a healer class, uh, you would have a total Veil Weaver level of four. Uh, this also includes your character level or your racial hit die, if you have those, if you're like a monster, uh, if you have innate Akashic abilities. That'll tell you what your Veil Weaver level is, if it's equal to your level or like half your level or something like that. Uh, next is the Veil Weaving Modifier, which is generally just the same modifier like you would see on a caster. So Wizards are an imp based class, Viziers are an imp based class, Clerics are a Wiz based class, Radiants are a Wiz based class, things like that. <clears throat> uh, as for how Veils work and interact with other things, Veils are supernatural abilities, unless they are specifically saying that they are giving you spell-like abilities. So a veil that is, say, just you summoning some plants out of the ground, uh, that would be a supernatural ability, so it would interact with things like attacks of opportunity or dispel magic, uh, as a supernatural ability would. However, if a veil gave you the ability to use plant growth as a spell-like ability, then it would count as a spell-like ability, it would trigger attacks of opportunity, uh, and it would interact with things like that as a spell-like ability would. <clears throat> a lot of veils uh, have ongoing effects like auras or things that you can summon. Now, the strength of certain abilities is dependent on how much essence is in the veil. However, 
The ongoing effect is determined at the time that the veil created the effect. So if, as I said, you summoned some plants uh, and the amount of essence that you had put into your veil would allow you to summon a huge tree instead of just some shrubbery, uh, that would stay as a tree even if you remove the essence out of that veil until the duration went up. As for other things like identifying a veil as you would a spell, uh, you can use our Knowledge Arcana to do that. And there are certain DCs to that, which should be here in the Akashic Rules, yes. Uh, so you can identify, uh, you know, a magical manifestation as Akasha, which is just a DC 10. Uh, you can identify the Veil's basic properties with a DC 15, and you can identify the Veil's bind effects with a DC 20. Now you can also see here, uh, the Veil Weavers can also disguise or disguise the presence or function of their veils using the disguise skill. Now that's because veils are magical constructs of energy. Uh, so they are actually shaped on your body uh, as with these slots would say here. So if you see someone with like mystical runes circling their arm, probably a veil, right? Or some kind of really weird ass spell. So you can see that kind of thing there. Uh, next is how veils uh, interact with spell resistance. We're just gonna ignore these subtypes for right now. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let's see here. Ah, uh, yes. So you can see that if you knock a veil weaver out, their veils are suppressed and they would have to wake up and reactivate them in order to use them. Uh, they can also be destroyed at this time since veils are constructs of energy. Uh, veils can be attacked while they are shaped on your body. Uh, you have to use a Sunder attack in order to damage a Veil. A veil has twice as many hit points as the Veil Weaver's level and a number of Hardness points equal to the Veil Weaver's level. And they also must take all that damage at once. So you have to deal three times the Veil Weaver's level in damage in order to destroy a Veil. So it's a bit hard to break them, which makes sense because those are the primary abilities and you can't really attack wizard spells. There are, however, some abilities which allow you to more directly harm veils. Uh, certain veils are veil breakers, uh, which means they excel at attacking veils. And there's a prestige class, which I believe is just called veil breaker, uh, that allows you to more easily destroy them, which is good for, you know, DMs who have characters who use Akasha, so you can give them an enemy sort of tailored to them, as well as players if your DM likes to use a lot of Akashic enemies. You can go into Veilbreaker and fuck them up. <laughs> Continuing on, we can see things like the uh, Storm Veils, which we're not going to get into because that's part of the Stormbound class. We'll get into that in a later video when I talk about the Stormbound in depth. Uh, you can see here Temporary Essence. Temporary Essence is something that you get uh, through various abilities, some feats, items, things like that. Uh, class features a lot of times will give you temporary essence. Temp E is always burned first and cannot be covered, uh, recovered through normal rest. Uh, but it otherwise just acts like normal essence. Uh, sort of like temporary hit points, it, essentially. Uh, you can see here that temporary hit points gained from a veil uh, are going to be regenerated slowly. However, if you take out the essence and put it back in, you're not going to get them all back at once. They're going to have to regenerate, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it makes sense why that ability is there, because otherwise people would just use their swift action to re-up their health, and that's not good for balance. <clears throat> uh, there are things like weapon-like veils. Now these are different from enhanced weapon veils because there are basically two schools that are making Akasha, and one really doesn't like weapon-like veils, the other does not like enhanced veils. So weapon-like veils are generally weapons, uh, excuse me, they're generally just veils that act as weapons. Uh, and they can be enhanced and enchanted, uh, much like a normal weapon would, as you invest essence into them. You can see here if I go down and we'll just find a general one. Uh, yeah, sure, Ebon Stars. Okay, 
So you can see here that there are two versions of Ebon Stars, the normal one and the enhanced version. Now, the normal version of Ebon Stars gives you a plus one enhancement bonus for point of essence invested as part of the hands bind. Whereas the hands bind for this one does not give you that ability, it has a different one. This is because as you put more essence into it, the veil gives you the ability to grant it enhancement bonuses. And a lot of other weapon like veils also give you the ability to put weapon abilities like flaming or shocking burst, things like that onto the weapons. Whereas with the enhanced veils, uh, they can act like actual magical items and you can enhance them by taking them to a crafter or taking a crafting feat yourself and you have to spend actual money on doing that. I personally prefer the enhanced veils uh, just because there are more things that you can do and you have more control over what kind of abilities are being put onto your weapon. <clears throat> because generally with a weapon like the list is set. You can only take these like seven or eight enhancements. Whereas with Enhanced Veil, you can put anything you'd like on that. Uh, and these can also be made out of specific materials. So you can set your Enhanced Veil up to be made out of adamantine if you wished, or silver if you were a werewolf hunter, things like that. Uh, as well, a lot of weapon like Veils allow you to use your Veil Weaver level in place of your BAB, which is another part of the rules that I'm not a particular fan of for weapon likes, because it allows the wizard, excuse me, the vizier, to just be a full BAB class. Not super hot on that. You can see here it's talking about descriptors, which we mentioned earlier, uh, like title veils, which are part of the Raja, who is technically a Veil Weaver, but they're more of a Path of War character. Uh, Path of War is, of course, another subsystem uh, which you may recognize as being very similar to the uh, Tome of Battle, Book of the Nine Swords, or the Book of Anime Fightin' Magic, which you may have heard of from 3.5, which a lot of people aren't super big fans of, uh, even though it's actually pretty cool. Uh, here it talks about voice fails, which are another descriptor and part of the Fisher King class. And here you can see the armor and weapon descriptors. Now these are actually old and no longer in use, <clears throat> but they are still listed in the rules here for legacy reasons. Uh, the armor and weapon descriptors became the enhanced armor and enhanced weapon descriptor. So oh, as we can see here, if we go back to Ebon Stars, you see that it has the Enhanced Light Flail Descriptor. So it is an Enhanced Veil that acts as a Light Flail in all purposes. So that would normally have been an Armor, or excuse me, a Weapon Descriptor Veil that was a Light Flail. Uh, but otherwise, these are identical to Enhanced Veils, which you can see here are described uh, right after that. And did we not talk about spell resistance? Where is spell resistance? Oh, here we go. It's here at the top. So you can see here that spell resistance is only effective against veils that directly target a creature or emulate an enchantment effect, but unless otherwise specified, does not apply against area of effect abilities or auras. Uh, nor does it apply against weapons, natural attacks, things like that. And of course, a Veil Weaver's Veils always overcome their own spell resistance. And here's where it talks about the Sunder stuff. So that is basically the general thing of Akasha. Uh, let me think here if there's anything else we need to talk about. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Essence Burn. We need to talk about that. So. Some abilities cause Essence Burn, uh, Burned Essence can't be used, and it's sort of just, it's there, but it's not there. So if you have Burned Essence, uh, say if you had to activate an ability that causes Essence Burn, uh, that sets in a separate pool and is no longer able to be accessed. And you have to wait in a calm environment in order to regain your Essence. Uh, a lot of Guru abilities cause Essence Burn. Uh, guru is very similar to the Monk uh, 
if the monk had mystical spells instead of key abilities. Although, I guess a veil is more similar to a key ability than it is to a spell, really. So yeah, they're, they're basically just like the monk. Uh, but we'll get into individual classes in other videos. And I think that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you get into Akashic Magic and start looking into this very, very cool subsystem. Um, it is a lot of fun. I'm having a great time with it, uh, both playing it and creating for it. Uh, I've actually got a book out. Uh, it's called Akasha Reshaped Hui. Um, which is Akasha's answer to the Druid, uh, which you can find on Itch.io and Drive Through RPG if you're interested. Uh, but the main Akashic rules and a lot of the classes can be found here on the Library of Metzafits, uh, which is also a website that I run. Um, it's sort of a compendium of all of the Akashic classes and rules and things like that. Uh, we also have a lot of rules for different subsystems like Psionics and Path of War. Um, I've also got Gonzo classes on here because I really love Gonzo because uh, I'm a big jokester at heart. Uh, but go ahead and take a look, see if you like it, and uh, thank you for joining me. Have a nice day.